Hello and welcome to my list for the top 15 point guards in the NBA right now. The reason why I'm doing 15 instead of 10 like most people do is because normally people do honorable mentions, but instead of doing that, I'm just going to include the honorable mentions into the list. To start us off at number 15, I have Chris Paul. He came off a season averaging 14 and 9 with okay shooting splits. You can see he definitely regressed from the previous season as he was the least efficient we've seen him in years. Chris Paul is now at the Warriors and it'll be interesting to see if he will come off the bench or it might see Curry shift to the 2 and Chris Paul will play at the 1. Either way, Chris Paul may get another shot to win a ring on a team that is known for winning. I have Drew Holiday at number 14. He's coming off a season averaging 19, 7, and 5 with good efficiency. However, Drew completely fell off in the playoffs. Even with Giannis getting hurt, you'd think he would step up, but he shot 40% from the field and 28% from 3. Drew is 33 going into his 15th season and is one of the better backcourt defenders in the league. Hopefully the Bucks can bounce back from their disappointing postseason. At number 13 I have Jamal Murray. He's coming off a season averaging 26 and 2 with good efficiency. I believe he would have been an all-star this past season if he didn't have that ACL injury. Before the injury his efficiency was better and he was on track to break out. It's strange because Murray is a borderline all-star in the regular season but turns into prime Michael Jordan in the playoffs. It's fair to say that the Nuggets wouldn't have won the championship without Murray's postseason success. I have LaMelo Ball in number 12. It's unfortunate that he couldn't stay healthy this season and injured the same ankle twice. He only played 36 games, but through those games he averaged 23 points per game, 8.5 assists, and 6.5 rebounds. He did take a step back in efficiency, but that is understandable considering he was dealing with his ankle during the season. LaMelo should be ready to play next season, and with the addition of Brandon Miller and the expected return of Miles Bridges, the Hornets will be an intriguing team to watch this season. At number 11, I have Darius Garland. Garland's coming off a season averaging 21.6 points per game with great shooting splits and 8 assists per game. However, in Garland's first postseason, he took a slight step back with averaging more turnovers and fouls while averaging less points, assists, rebounds, and shooting percentages. Basically, everything was worse for Garland. But like I said, this was his first postseason and he's only 23. The future is bright for him and the Cavs. At number 10, I have Jalen Brunson. Some people may question why I have him this high, but this spot is deserving. He came off a season averaging 24 and 6 with amazing shooting splits and great efficiency. Brunson also stepped up in the playoffs, averaging 28 points per game with good efficiency. He also averaged 5.5 assists and 6 rebounds. Brunson led his team past the Cavaliers, which I did not expect, especially considering the performances Brunson's teammates were having. He played all 48 minutes in one game against the Heat. Brunson has that dog in him. He's only 26, and it's crazy to think that just a year ago, people were saying the Knicks overpaid him. This may be a little controversial, but I do have Harden here at 9. Harden is coming off a season averaging 21 points per game and 10.7 assists with decent shooting splits and pretty good efficiency. The thing that is bringing Harden down is the playoff appearance he just had. Normally players step up in the playoffs and average better stats, but Harden did the opposite. Through 11 games in the playoffs, Harden averaged 20 points per game and 8 assists, but his shooting splits is what is concerning. He shot 39% from the field and somehow almost shot a better 3-point percentage than his field goal percentage. I'm sure Harden will bounce back from these struggles, whether he stays in Philly or moves on to another team. At number 8, I have Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton is one of the most underrated players in the league, probably because he's on such an underrated team and he's only played 3 seasons, but it's time people start taking note. He's coming off a season averaging 20 points per game and 10.4 assists with only 2.5 turnovers per game. He also shot 49% from the field and 40% from 3. Most players never even come close to these percentages and Halliburton is doing this in his third season. The Pacers are building something special and Halliburton is the man to lead them. That Pacers-Kings trade that sent Halliburton to Indiana was one of the most fair trades as the Pacers got their franchise player and the Kings got an all-star center to help lead them to the number 3 seed in the West this past season. I have Trey Young at number 7. Trey is one of the hardest players to rank because a lot of people are really high on him, but others are saying he's overrated. So for this I decided to block out the noise and just pull the trigger and put him here at number 7. Trey came off a season averaging 26 points per game with not so good shooting splits, but he averaged 10 assists per game. But to counter that, he averaged 4 turnovers per game and is one of the worst defenders in the league. I know I just said a lot of negative things about him, but he still has a talent and he's only 24 entering his 6th season. He's staying relatively healthy throughout his career so far, and I have no doubt in my mind that he will bounce back from these shooting struggles, 
That's just a season prior, he shot 46% from the field and 38% from three, which are good splits. This may be a little surprising, but I do have Fox at number six. The Kings were one of the most surprising teams this season, but looking back, the talent is all there on the roster. And on the face of the number three seed in the West is the Aaron Fox. He's coming off a season averaging 25, 6, and 4 with great shooting splits. He was making shots at a higher volume and good efficiency. Fox and the Kings took the Warriors to 7 games, and Fox stepped up, averaging 27 and 7 assists with 2 steals per game. If Fox can really lock down on his 3 point shot, he has the potential to be a top tier player in the league. At number 5, I have John Morant. Of course, there has been a lot of drama surrounding John, and he'll miss the first 25 games due to being suspended. But Jaw is undoubtedly one of the most entertaining players to watch, and his talent is undeniable, coming off a season averaging 26, 8, and 6, but taking a slight step back in efficiency to the season prior. If Jaw can fix his off-the-court issues, there's no doubt in my mind that he will be one of the faces of the league for the next decade. At number 4, I have SGA. SGA absolutely blew up this year, averaging 31.5 points with amazing efficiency. He was the runner-up in the Most Improved Player Award, and was selected to the All-NBA First Team. SGA put the league on notice this year, with the starting lineup of SGA, Wallace, Giddy, Jalen Williams, and Holgrim, this team is only going to get scarier. The Thunder also have a plethora of first round picks for the next few years. I have Dame at number 3. He is easily coming off of his best season averaging 32, 7, and 5 with good shooting splits. Although Dame's future in Portland is questionable, he is ready to win now. If he's traded, he will be traded to a contender, and it's a scary thought of him being teamed up with someone like Jimmy Butler on the Heat or Kawhi on the Clippers, which are the teams in trade talks with Portland. Dame has struggled with injuries in the last two seasons. If Dame can stay healthy, he will easily be a top 15 player in the league with the season he just had. A number 2 eye of Luka. Luka is only 24 and is one of the most dominant players in the league. He is coming off a season averaging a near 32 point triple double with the best efficiency we have seen so far in his career. But just a season prior, he led the Mavericks to the Western Conference Finals. Of course, Luka and the Mavs missed the playoffs and even missed the play-in tournament this past season. You can't put this on Luka as he is doing everything he can. Kyrie was a good addition to form arguably the best offensive backcourt in the league, but the defense is lacking. Good thing the Mavs drafted Derek Lively and Oliver Maxson's Prosper, who are great on the defensive end. And at number one, I have Steph Curry. It was close between him and Luka, but I think Luka will overtake Curry soon. Many predicted Luka would be MVP last season, but he hasn't taken that next step to MVP status. But he should this season, hopefully. Curry is coming off one of his best seasons statistically, while arguably having one of his best postseasons in his career, as he averaged 30 points per game with good efficiency. It's crazy to think Steph is 35, and in my opinion, is still the best point guard in the league. With his smaller size and play style, I could see him being an all-star caliber player till he's 40. With the Warriors' addition of Chris Paul and departure of Jordan Poole, and the extension of Draymond, the Warriors are in a good position to win a championship right now, but that gap is closing, and it's closing fast, with Curry, Paul, Draymond, and Clay all reaching the end of their careers. Maybe some of their younger guys like Kaminga can get some playtime and step up to help. Thanks for watching the video. If you're still here, I just want to say thank you for watching the full video. Um, I'm a new content creator and I'll be mainly posting basketball related content, mainly NBA content and maybe some college videos and maybe some high school videos like the, the top high school prospects in the country and stuff like that. Um, anyways, thank you for watching and it means so much to me if you could subscribe and like the video. And uh, have a good night or day. Thank you.